covering the reconstruction of the Seekonk schools. Michael will be covering the Seekonk economy. And I will be covering the history of Seekonk and the historical houses. Hi, I'm Jill, and I will be discussing the town of Seekonk and the need to reconstruct the schools to be able to accommodate the more students that there are, joining each year. Today, I'm speaking with a member of the school committee, John Beagle. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. So, what's the overall goal here? Is there a short-term goal? Is there a long-term goal? Yeah, so as far as, you know, what we want the school department to be, the overall goal is to provide an atmosphere that is conducive to learning for all students at all grade levels. We want to have a place, the resources, and the instructors that will help maximize students' education so they can be better prepared to go to college, or trade school or for the workforce once they graduate. So what are your thoughts on this, not just as a committee member, but as a parent? As a parent, the changes that you know we're talking about will not impact my kids directly. Um, you know, my youngest child, he'll be in high school next year, and from where we're at in discussions right now, it seems like nothing is going to change at the high school. Um, as far as, and then my oldest child is already in the high school and she'll be a senior. So, uh, I've tried to listen to the comments that people have made uh, from kids who do have, from parents who do have kids in the elementary school and take them to heart and uh, form my own opinions as to what is best based on listening to them. I would say philosophically, that as the budgets for the school department get tighter every year, I think it is in the students' and parents' best interest to have fewer buildings in the future rather than more buildings. Um, each, each building you have requires money to operate and maintain, and I would prefer that uh, the money go directly toward, you know, instruction for students. That would be my, you know, that's, as a parent, that's, that's my take on it. So when is the plan due? Is it due at the end of the year? Is it coming up? Is it because it seems like a change has to happen at least soon? Yes. Yeah. So I think the short term uh, we need to address. There's not like a fixed deadline, but we have to have have a, a decision and a solution for the fall of 2018. Now that takes us to the third option which is uh, some modular classrooms at both the Martin and the Aiken school um, you know originally I would have thought uh, I would not have been in favor of modular classrooms from what I understand uh, the ones that are being built now they're, they're, they're good quality they're they're visually I don't want to say they're the most they're the best looking option but they they are pretty good and, um, you know, we would have to get approval from the town to purchase those because it would be the town that actually purchased them. Yeah. All right, so uh, at, what I was saying was, so the modular classroom units would be purchased by the town and then installed uh, by either the manufacturer or the school department. But it is appropriate that the town pay for that because it's really a a capital expense uh, for the facilities and that it's most appropriate from the town budget. So for all of those reasons, out of the three solutions, personally, that would be the one that I, I, I'm leaning towards at this point. I'm going to, uh, it's probably going to be discussed on school committee meeting on January 8th. Mr. Deedle shared a lot of information regarding the reconstruction of the schools. This is in regard to more than the elementary schools yeah, than any well, other schools. Work, it I looks as if the decision will be reached to accommodate the growing number of registrations for the students at the schools sometime soon. It is Micah, and I'm going to be talking about Seekonk's economy. Seekonk's economy is doing very well. All of their stats are above the United States average for the income per cap, the household income, and the family median income. Each of our economic stats are almost $20,000 above average. Seekonk's economy is doing very well and thriving. The average for 
in the U.S. income per cap is $28,555. She comes average is $35,415. The U.S. average household income is $53,482. But she comes household income is $74,242. She comes average family income is also $88,042. The U.S. average income is $65,443. There are still things Seacom citizens can do to improve the economic statistics, but we are also doing very well. We are above all the U.S. The U.S. averages. Thank you for your attention. Or for watching about Seacom's economy. Next up is Nick talking about historical houses in Seacom. That's a wrap. Hello everybody, my name is Nick and today we'll be celebrating the 205th anniversary of our amazing town Seacom. Today we will be showing you the oldest house still standing in Seacom. The oldest house in Seacom is located on 385 Jacob Street. This house was originally owned by William H. Hunt, who bought the land in 1680, but in 1690 he decided to build the house. This house originally had 50 acres of land, but due to the growing population, it only has one acre now. This house has been through many significant um, historical events, such as King Philip's War. So. So for a house to withstand such a great war like that proves that it has great historical significance and that it is important to this town. One of the pictures on the screen right now will be a picture that is taken in 16 or 1800s and the other one is a picture that was taken a couple years ago. As you can see the house hasn't really changed much but it still is a great um, difference in, from now and then. As you can see, this house has maintained its structure very well, and the most, the most uh, recognizable part of this house is the center chimney. That's what everybody knows this house for, and it's scattered windows all across the house. This is a great, the house is a great symbol of Seacon, proving that the town has been through so much during, in history, and it is very significant to our amazing country. This has been HMS News. And we hope you enjoyed our reports on the Seekonk School Reconstruction, the Seekonk Economy, and the historical houses in Seekonk. Thank you.